Welcome to the Cosmic Cube Podcast. This is going to be your episode for March 4th to March 10th, 2019. And definitely stick around for our interview that we have for you guys today. We interviewed the Chicago hip hop duo Mother Nature, and we had a really great conversation with them. But before we get into that, we're going to jump into the forecasting. And first, let's talk a bit about how our week has been going. And we should be honest with you guys, because usually we record these on the Friday before we release it. But because I'm going to be going to Joshua Tree this weekend, we're actually recording on a Wednesday. So we're only really halfway through the week. Um, So even though I drew the Six of Cups, you know, I'm still kind of like experiencing it. And I think I'm going to experience it a lot more when I'm with my mom because it was a card about nostalgia on this Joshua Tree trip. So I'm still kind of waiting for that Six of Cups to kick in. What about you? Um, I haven't really... I usually really understand the, the previous card of the week by the end of the week, and we usually record these forecasts on Fridays, but um, I think the thing that I think of with the Six of Cups is Mother Nature, um, they're, they uh, they basically confirmed our interview um, this week, and since the Six of Cups has two kids on it, it really made me think of Mother Nature because they just released a new music video that has a bunch of kids in it and the kids sing along and part of the verse and everything. Um, and also with mother nature, they incorporate a lot of like nineties, um, style into their work. So it makes me think of the fact that we got to interview mother nature was my six of cups so far, but also the cool thing is like, um, they scheduled it to be on a Wednesday and this Wednesday was when the moon was conjunct Jupiter in Sagittarius, which we said would be a really positive day. And also um, today, um, on Wednesday, the sun is sextiling Mars, uh, which we said would give us lots of ambition. And Scarlett and I have been recording podcasts. Since like 1 p.m. Yeah, we've been on a marathon, but we're having a good time. We're, you know, we're doing it. So the beers are helping. (laughs) Yes, they are. So why don't we draw our tarot card for the week of March 4th to March 10th? Okay, let me give them a couple shuffles here. I'm using again my classic Rider Waite, though I feel like eventually I should start using some some other decks. I just love this deck so much. It's hard to, to switch it up sometimes. Yeah, it's fun when a different deck will give you a different vibe for what you're reading. Also, when I like describe the cards, people are most familiar with Rider Waite, so I find it's easier with people when I pull a card and I, I mention what it is. People can usually conjure in their mind what that looks like if they're at least a little bit familiar with the Rider Waite deck. Yeah, and if people listen to this and they're like having trouble picturing what the cards look like, I mean, a simple Google search will show you most likely the Rider Waite card off the bat, but there's also an app that I always kind of have on hand um, the tarot app that has the Rider Waite cards and you can just mm-hmm. click explore and just look at the card and look at them their definition of the meaning so sometimes mm-hmm. having it on your smartphone reinforces like the imagery and stuff yeah so I got my card shuffled and cut are we ready for the card of the week let's see okay card of the week oh god <laughs> okay so we have the seven of cups And this is a really interesting card. So visually, there is a ton going on. So it's a cups card. So we're connecting with the element water. And there's this kind of silhouetted figure in the foreground. So we're seeing him from behind. And he's looking up at this cloud. And on this cloud are seven different cups, each with a different object, you could say. And you can think of these different objects as representing different paths or different desires. So for example, one um, is a castle inside of a cup representing the desire for stability and power. One is jewels, so representing the desire for wealth. One is the laurel wreath, which represents victory because that was what the Olympians wore. And one is a dragon representing adventure. So you have kind of all of these um, very elaborate kind of uh, fantasy-like Uh, symbols inside of these cups and you have this figure and he's kind of just like oh I don't know what to do there's all these options in front of me where do I go from here 
So this is an interesting card because on the one hand, it's about daydreaming. And he's looking up at these cups that have these kind of elaborate things inside them and they're not realistic. Like you're not gonna win a, a bucket full of jewels or or own a castle or fight a dragon. They're all these kind of really fantastical ideas, something that you might daydream or something you might have an actual dream about. So with this card, it's showing that you're not able to move forward in your life in the way that you want to because you're still holding on to some type of fantasy. And that fantasy is also pulling you in different directions. You don't really know what direction to take your life in because you're not bringing things down to earth. And even in the image itself, there is no earth, there is no ground. You're like in the sky looking up at the clouds. So with this card, it's saying, you know, yeah, you know, it's good to daydream every once in a while, but for this week, you need to bring it back down to earth because you're getting lost in the world of fantasy, the world of what could be or what you would love for your life to be and losing the reality of what you can do for your life and how you can positively affect your life right now. Um, so really a deep card, I think, especially for for people in our generation and just kind of technology too, when you think about how we all live these kind of like fantasy ideas, like Instagram, for example, is a fantasy. We're all like looking out and, and imagining and daydreaming our lives to be something. But in reality, we need to bring it back down to earth and, and think about what are the, some of the tangible ways I can actually move forward. Yeah, right when I saw that card, I mean, I glanced at the astrology for this week and was expecting pretty much something like that. <laughs> yeah. Because, well, we're getting right into it, the first thing that happens this week, astrologically of significance, is Mercury goes retrograde oh. in Pisces <laughs> at 1.19 p.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday, March 5th, Mardi Gras. Um, <laughs> that card looks very Mardi Gras to me, too. Like It does I, look Mardi Gras. It's like... I Excess, yeah, yeah, and I lived in New Orleans. Like there was plastic cups everywhere. There, that thing that looks like literally beads, laurels. Um, that is Mardi Gras. A dragon. I mean, that's Mardi Gras right there. And this is Pisces season with Mercury stationing retrograde in Pisces. So, um, yeah, that's going to be happening um, until March twenty eighth. So month of March is going to be the Pisces fog and the Pisces fantasy so maybe just in general with that card like Mardi Gras is fun but yeah. it's like you have to get your shit together immediately after and you get it yeah you get the you get it all out of your system yeah, um, it's like a healthy way like you're living your your dreams if you go to Mardi Gras I imagine yeah. like you're experiencing it but at the same time you can't stay there forever I mean it, it ends at midnight you know so yeah. it's kind of suggesting it's got to end Mm -hmm. too. And then it begins a period of, you know, fasting or whatever. So, mm -hmm. um, so th that is the first thing that happens. Mercury goes retrograde Tuesday, March 5th, one nineteen PM Eastern time. That is going to last three weeks and will end on January 28th, March 28th. I'm sorry. March 28th, 2019. Next thing on the list, big event Wednesday, March 6th, new moon in Pisces. And Uranus, the outer planet of um, revolution, surprises, rebellion, independence, is moving out of the kitty cat. <laughs> is moving out of Aries, where he's been since 2011, and mm -hmm. into Taurus. So. Um, Mercury retrograde begins with cats scratching pieces of paper just literally eating our notes for today yeah um, <laughs> um so yeah uranus is the planet of like i said um revolutionary ideas progressive ideas when it moved into the sign of aries in 2011 that um coincided with like the arab spring mm. um and there was lots of like global revolution around that time so that was when it was in aries um which is like 
independent and fiery and action-packed. Taurus, on the other hand, is a fixed earth sign. So it's interesting to think about this symbolism. The fixed earth sign of Taurus is going to affect probably material things more than just like passionate uprisings. Um, So how can the material world be revolutionized? I think of, you know, the environmental movement or the green movement or things related to physical stuff, planet Earth or money Mm -hmm. like coins. You think of cryptocurrency or changes, but also, I mean, it's pretty hard to make grand you know, predictions when you're thinking about something that lasts eight to nine years, which is, yeah. (laughs) So it's, you usually have to look in retrospect, like what did that phase mean? But in a general sense, you know, this, we're entering a a new long-term chapter with all of this. So that's going to be the big shift on Wednesday um, on top. And also I mentioned there's a new moon in Pisces happening Wednesday. So, you know, we we said Pisces season 2019 is, you know, supercharged with the Mercury retrograde going through it. We got the new moon happening, you know, yeah, and we're, we're, fi- st- we're finally we're still in cups, too. And we went from the, the six to the seven. We had the six last week and we had the seven this week. So yeah, that's wild. What if we get the eight next week? <laughs> we're just stuck in cups right now. Well, we we were stuck in fire. Yeah. For a while with the well, wands. We did draw an, an eight of cups in um the interview because we did a tarot reading for mother nature so even that card makes an appearance so yeah a lot of cups on energy spoiler (laughs) alert (laughs) but um but yeah the cup i mean your your water is the emphasis right now Mm -hmm. the whole month of march is water and you know the tarot cards just did that for us so new moon new beginnings so this is going to be like the new beginning of mercury retrograde season and pisces season so get ready to be poetic emotional fluid dreamy creative artistic hopefully not overindulgent because pisces can lead to Mm -hmm. attachment to substances or escapism from reality well that's what this card is escapism from reality too Yeah. yeah and that i mean so the yeah it you know if if the universe is pulling you towards escapism um and it's out of your control i guess try try to have the most fun escape from reality possible but also you know just like know that it's short term and know that you're gonna have to get it all back together eventually you know i think about video games a lot when i think about this card because really? it's, it's like video games are such this powerful daydream in a way like Mm -hmm. you get to be a character you get to like fight these demons or these dragons almost kind of like you see in this card and at the same time while it does provide this great escapism it's preventing you from like actually dedicating time to to making those changes in the real world and not to say that we shouldn't have time for entertainment we definitely should but when i think about this card to me i i just always think of people who who spend too much time in that escapist world, in the fandoms, in the community. Um, And whether that's video games or whether that's like a TV show you're obsessing over or something like that, that's what I always think about with this card, just kind of getting sucked in Mm -hmm. to some type of escapist fantasy. Yeah, that that makes total sense with... um with what we're looking at here. And we saw it coming, you know, we were like, hey, all of this is going to change in March. And here we are drawing water cards and seeing all these things happen. So don't let it trip you up. And there can be like a self-care um, component to all of this by mm-hmm. being like, hey, if you need to, I mentioned crying last week. I, <laughs> I didn't cry yet this week for our listeners. I mentioned like smoking pot and crying. I mean, honestly, though, like whatever can facilitate you, like go to see a therapist or like get deep and get watery and let the tears flow to heal if you need them to. Have you heard about the term anxiety baking? It's like a new thing that millennials are doing. I think I've read it about read about it. Like cooking, cooking. Yeah, like baking. Yeah, it's like a new thing that 
I, of course, I read this on BuzzFeed, so it's complete bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a new term for people who like to, like, bake cookies and stuff when they're kind of feeling anxious. And I that's what makes me think about this time period, too. Like, when you're talking, I'm just like, I just need to, to bake some chocolate chip cookies, man. And even eat the, eat the cookies, I, And too. eat the cookies. Like, the <laughs> yeah. overindulgence factor is Pisces-related. So, or, I'm more of a alcoholic. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> Do we need an intervention on this podcast? No, I'm really not an alcoholic, but like, I mean... You don't have this a sweet tooth? Oh, I do have a sweet tooth too, but I don't bake that much. Oh, like, yeah. I... When I overindulge, it's usually with weed and beer and yeah. and, and and sweets sometimes, but mm-hmm. um, sometimes you need it, you know, but... Everything in moderation, including moderation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is not a time for moderation. But th- this is reality. We're looking at them. And I hope I hope for the best that like people just overcome this and don't have to deal with the Pisces fog and are productive or whatever. But if you're not, that's the astrology. So mm. you'll get through it. It's not going to last. It's going to last one month. Though I don't think you can tell your boss the reason you've been unproductive for the past couple of weeks is it's Pisces season. Luckily, I don't think I, that's going to go over well. Luckily, I'm my own boss, so <laughs> <laughs> I am accountable for myself in being being a, a Pisces. And maybe it's because we've done like massive amounts of interviews. I feel like I'm talking like... I feel like I'm talking like a Pisces Mercury. Just like other. extra Pisces. Mm. I just like got the vocal fry going on. Just extra Pisces, man. <laughs> the waves of Pisces and the deep, deep ocean of Pisces, man. Pass me the bong, man. No, I'm, that's that's not me. <laughs> but no, it is me right now, unfortunately. But before we get too far off the deep end of Pisces, um, after so yeah, new beginning, new moon Wednesday. It's going to be <laughs> conjunct, conjunct Neptune, which is the, like, cloud nine Pisces super planet. So, and yeah, the sun and moon are conjunct next to Neptune after Mercury goes retrograde in Pisces. So, I don't know, man. Like, Just stay home and, and get cozy. <laughs> seriously, yeah. Listen to the new Mother Nature album. Yeah. <laughs> the new EP. Um. So yeah, that's that's happening Wednesday. Uh, moving along, you know, the, um, the next major aspect that will be nice uh, is going to be on Saturday. Sun sextile Saturn. So Saturn is the opposite of Pisces. Saturn mm-hmm. is the ruler of Capricorn and Aquarius. Um, Saturn binds and makes things, lays out boundaries. So if you... You know, this is going to be a three-week extended Pisces period. It's going to be really strong in the middle of this week. And then on Saturday, on Saturn's day, um, the sun makes a sextile. So when the sun is making a sextile to Saturn, um, we talk about the two harmonious um, aspects, which is the trine and the sextile. The trine kind of happens automatically and you're automatically in harmony. The sextile is there sort of waiting for you to activate it. So do something productive on Saturday for the love of God because you're probably going to be coming off of a week of like laziness, daydreams, actual dreams, naps, drugs. Hopefully you know. not too many drugs. I feel like, like after listening to this podcast, they think you're a complete like stoner. I'm really not though. I think it's just like from a, a just to use like symbols, you know, Metaphors. metaphorical drugs. Those are the only drugs I use, anyways. Come on, <laughs> your health is your wealth, guys. But um, yeah, Sun sextile Mars on Saturday. Uh, it's gonna be really early Saturday too. So you know, like Friday into Saturday morning get it together and then sunday um the mars is gonna sextile neptune so okay we have this neptune pisces thing happening all week anyways um on sunday you can sort of fire that up and kick start like if you're doing something productive in this pisces atmosphere 
Mars will give you the energy to do that on Sunday. And it's also mm-hmm. daylight savings time on Sunday, which is my oh, least favorite we day. We spring of the forward, year. right? Yeah. Oh, so we lose an hour of sunlight. Oh, <laughs> Not gosh. good for the Pisces. Nappers. You know, like the weather is going to be horrible, like, to, I think. So it's just, yeah. I'm not looking forward to daylight savings time this year. Yeah, I, I'm just going to put up my blackout curtains and not leave and you know what? the house. Poxitani Phil, the the gopher, or or is he a gopher? From Groundhog daylight, Day? Yeah, yeah. He, from daylight, he's a groundhog, right? Yeah. He's not a gopher. <laughs> um, he predicted an early spring, and I really hope we start seeing it soon. Okay, well, if we're in Chicago, we can expect nice weather by June then. That's early spring. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm I'm really rooting for for Phil this year because I'm really wanting that early spring. Yeah, well, that basically sums it up. I mean, this is going to be a big week. You know, there's there is major stuff happening this week. It's just like very wet, watery, dreamy, and it's almost hard for me to even like explain well because we're already kind of under these influences. So, you know, when we're looking at the the is it the eight seven the seven of cups. Um, mm-hmm. Have fun in your like video game, altered reality, like fantasy world. But like, yeah, I it's, think it's like we got to embrace it, like yeah. enjoy it and just like make sure that when this time is over, you're going to be ready and able to, to get your shit back together. Yeah. And like we said, Saturday is a good day to kickstart it. And then, you know, it really won't be over until March is over. <laughs> <laughs> just got to get through March. March is always a tough month for me anyway, because it's that like ugly time oh, yeah. of the year. Just like the dark skies. You I, know. I so miss the polar vortex. You're March. the only one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, this has been an interesting forecast. You know, I'd love to hear from you guys, too. So definitely let us know if you're experiencing, you know, the card of the week or or if you're liking our forecasts, we'd love to hear from you guys. And stay tuned for our interview coming up. It's really interesting. And I can't wait for you guys to to hear all about this amazing hip-hop duo. Yeah, thanks, guys. And enjoy Mother Nature. I do not know what you do. I'll do it. I am me and you are you. I can't do it. I do not know what you do. I can't do it. So today on Cosmic Keys, we are super excited to be talking with local superstars, Mother Nature. Uh, Mother Nature is a hip-hop duo that I discovered through the local DIY arts community in Chicago, and they are growing in popularity. They just had um, an awesome, like, long-form article in the Chicago Reader. They've been written about in one of the publications that I contribute to, which is The Sick Muse. Um, So today I'd like to introduce you to... Cleva and Truth, who make up Mother Nature. (laughs) Nice to meet y'all. What am I? Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for being on our podcast and talking with us today. And one of the reasons we wanted to talk to you guys is you guys actually rap about spirituality to a certain degree. And I've even heard you guys like reference like chakras from time to time and things like that. So, um, and I think you even mentioned that like music to you guys was, was kind of like a spiritual healing process in a way. I'd love to hear about why you talk about those topics in your music. Man, uh, for me, uh, I've been like on my spiritual journey for what year is it? Twenty eighteen. I've been on my spiritual journey. <laughs> I've been on my spiritual journey for about five, about five years now. Um, I've always been like I would say spiritual or like in tune, but I started studying metaphysics around like twenty fourteen. And since then, it really expanded and opened my mind to just like the powers of. Um, that we have that like we are just innately powerful and connected and um i started just learning more about my own body and about what was happening internally and connecting that with you know everything that i was experiencing experiencing on the outside of me 
So just, you know, understanding the science of life and the science of like of, of being alive and I just naturally went into my music. It's kind of how like my music uh, before we became like Mother Nature, my music personally has always been like uh, me trying to understand myself, you know, and me um, trying to come to terms with who I am and that being something that people can look towards for their own guidance. And so in my music, I mean, I'm just always kind of talking about uh, what that is for me. Um, I am in tune with my chakras. You know, I do pay attention to that stuff. I am always like uh, just trying to be self-aware and how I move and the type of energy I get out, give out and the type of energy I'm open to receiving. So naturally for me, it just kind of always goes into the music because music is life and, you know, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I personally came into like the spirituality, I'd say, through uh, one of my professors, uh, Dr. Ruth Nicole Brown. I had an opportunity to be in her class as an undergrad in her graduate class, and I came upon this thing called the Socracy, and it was pretty much an ideology on how everyone can sustain and thrive, and nobody would be uh, without or lacking, and that definitely intrigued me. Um, and it just had me, it made me just think of like, man, why, why isn't the world like this? <laughs> why can't we build this? Why, why isn't this a thing? And uh, it just made me explore more uh, with myself and uh, the people around me for sure. And uh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's definitely been a journey, definitely been something that um, has caused me to, to look at myself internally um, and see and just see the, the God within me and the God within those around me. Um, yeah, so it's, it's just been a, a dope thing, and of course, because music is, like you say, it is life. You know, it's the it's the air we breathe type of thing. Um, it's, it naturally just uh, intrinsically just went within the music. So, and naturally, Mother Nature just as we started making music together, Mother Nature just kind of chose us as a name. Like, it it kind of came out of nowhere, and it it was that once we said it, it stuck, and we're like, this is what it is. This is this is how we see ourselves. This is how we see our impact. This is how we um, you know, we're dynamic. We we try to emulate nature in our movements and in the way that we give love to people and the way we give truth to people. So it's just really all synonymous you know, to our experience. Yeah, that's awesome. And um, for our listeners, like um, Truth, you grew up in the Austin neighborhood, correct? And uh, Cleva, you grew up in Urbana. And then the two of you met at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, correct? Yep. Right. Yeah, so um, we just wanted to ask you, you know, like now that you're you're talking about these spiritual topics, they sound like, first of all, like stuff that Scarlett and I both really resonate with. But what was your early spiritual like life like? Like, were you raised with religion or what was your early life like in that department? Man, I, I, I was on and off type of thing. Uh, my grandmother was definitely big into religion. Um, my mother, not as much, but definitely, definitely preached, you know, to me about, you know, do unto others as you want them doing to you type of thing. So I always had that mindset of like, it is something higher. It is something more outside of just us. Um, but yeah, it was nothing that like, I, I didn't like go to church every week or anything like that. It was nothing like that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting to me now that I'm, I'm so like devoted to this type of lifestyle because it definitely wasn't anything I grew up with per se. So my, my pops was definitely my introduction into spirituality. Um, it's something that he 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 grew up Christian and whatnot. And he wasn't like super into church or nothing like that. But he read me the Bible all the time. He read me the little yellow Bible. I don't know if y'all remember those, the gold Bibles um, that like Jehovah Witnesses would bring to your house and stuff. That was my first Bible, and I still can remember stories from that. Um, and and now even when I go through life, some of those stories still present themselves to me. So. From there, like just I guess from like four or five years old, I always had a concept of God and I prayed and and things like that. So even though I wasn't fully understanding what it was, I was already creating um I was already creating it for myself in my imagination and in my world. So yeah. And even to this day, my pops and I still talk and our conversations are still very spiritual. They just sound a lot different than they did in the 90s. So. Yeah. One of the things that we talk about from time to time is, 
is amongst kind of our, our generation. I'm assuming you guys are, are both millennials too. Um, often a lot of us have might have like grown up with religion, but often as a whole, our generation is kind of just moving away from organized religion and towards just what connects with us spiritually and kind of we go in our our own directions and I find that super fascinating about people our age and in our generation that we're each kind of seeking out spirituality in in different forms through different ways like through music like yourselves and and it really feels like nowadays there's so much more openness and, and that gives you the ability to kind of express your beliefs in in different ways mm-hmm yeah. yeah, and you guys talk about manifestation. I think a lot too in in some of your lyrics and and the power of of manifestation and the power of our mind and that's something that that we're really fascinated with too. What what are your thoughts on on manifestation? Words are spells. So the <laughs> words are spells. You know, um, the right combination, the right time gives you the right thing or the wrong thing. So. Uh, it can be something that's instant. It can be something that's, you know, months down the line. But I think that people definitely have to recognize the power of of the tongue and just vocal, like, vibration that comes out. Like, you put that energy out there, you speak something, it will happen. And it might not necessarily happen in the way that you imagine, but um, that's how the we conversing with the universe all the time, you know. So, yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting when you think about, like, how much words are power both they can be like words are power in a, a political or a historical sense but also just in like a metaphysical sense when we put our feelings and we we speak them out loud we're kind of like making a declaration to to spirit or, or whatever you believe in and just by sometimes saying it i kind of leads you down that path to it it becoming a reality yeah, because we exist in a world where it is like people really like rely on their five senses and it's like, that's, yeah, but that's not all that there is, you know, so when you do speak and you use the power of thought and you use the power of collectivity and collective thought, um, yeah, we we are so capable of a lot more than what we can see, hear, taste, feel, touch, so. Yeah, that's awesome. And what I wanted to ask you to, you know, in hip hop and in freestyling, you're improvising and you're you have to get into a flow state. Um, mm-hmm. And I I I don't I'm not a rapper, but like I am an artist myself, and trying to catch that flow state is like an art in itself. I was wondering, like, how does your spiritual worldview tie in with that like ecstatic? flow state where stuff pours out and like what is your relationship with all of that man that's man that ain't that it's just god <laughs> to be honest this is god like because uh i feel like a, a dope cypher it requires like vulner- vulnerability it requires openness it requires you to just let go and let god like whatever whatever is flowing through you whatever thoughts that are already on your mind you gotta allow that to just to just be and to just be present in that moment um, a, a dope cipher allows you to ch- connect with the vibrations around you. That's what makes you know the freestyle even better because you can go off some what somebody last said, grab a hold of that vibration, and then continue on with your own. So it ju- it just requires you to just let go and let and let it be. Like we we also like teach kids and stuff like that. Um, so it. It's dope to, to to get them to understand that type of concept because they think it's so hard to do. And I mean, I get that. Like to begin it, like it is. Wake up, but it only it's only hard because most people are so, you know, just high strung and and holding on to things. You know, nine times out of ten. So when it's time to just be free and just let it all flow out, everybody's scared to do it. And that's what holds a lot of people back is fear, and that goes beyond the cipher. That's just in life fear will stop you from thinking of a solution to a problem just because oh I can't do it so that's that block so now nothing else is going to flow because you put that block up so it's just a lot it's just getting out of your own head it's like thinking without thinking yeah yeah that's that's really interesting too when I think of the flow state just because I I do tarot and, and Dan does astrology you kind of have to get into something similar where in a way you're 
kind of just closing off the the neuroses of your own brain and just like trusting what's within and just like letting it pour out. So when I do like a reading for someone, I'm trying to just kind of like shut off my consciousness and just like let my subconscious speak, you know, and and to a certain degree, I think kind of that's maybe what musicians experience too in that kind of flow state. You kind of just got to like trust and like let it happen. Definitely. So you guys have a uh, a new EP coming out in March. Yes. Can you give us a little preview, like uh, what type of material is going to be on it and what's like the um, origin story of it? Origin. <laughs> well, it's very intense. It's, um, I guess if we were to put like a season on it or give it an element of nature, it would be like, thunder and lightning and earthquakes and volcanoes and stuff <laughs> because it's just it's that it's pressure um you know we always about peace and love and we're always about you know giving love and 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 things feeling good and things feeling great but in reality uh there's times when things are absolutely terrible and there's times when you know you might be at your lowest and you got to bring it up you know, and so that our music in this project really speaks to that. And it's it's a really good starting point for a lot of people who are listening to us to understand, like, just the level that we think at and the level that we're like the level that we try to have our friends think at. Like, we have to be able to understand this if we're going to survive, period. It's, it's, it's survival um, and it's mind over matter. So mm-hmm. I say the origin of pressure too. It, it definitely came from a lot of a lot of heartache, a lot of more lower points than than we would have liked to have gone through. Um, but it definitely created um, uh, an atmosphere for us to create what what we have in pressure. So, man, it's I, I feel like with the first joint that we just dropped, simple is is definitely carefree and and light and and all of those good things. But as you as you delve deeper and just the lyrical content of it. I think that's what a lot of people mistake is that it's still just roses and daisies and everything like that but it's, it's really it, it goes into the struggles that we were, we were facing during the time that we made made these records and man I'm, I'm glad that we went through because it, it definitely um it, it showed us you know some things about ourselves about our dynamic our team everything mm-hmm. um but yeah it's it's uh I think it's, it's going to be something that people haven't heard from us yet and is opening the door to a lot more content that we got flowing in right after so it's so. we uh so we're gonna dive into the astrology of you your of mother nature i'm just wondering um are, are you familiar with the idea of the saturn return uh kind of so the two of you are basically in your Saturn return right now. It's like you're like 27, 28. Yes, like, okay. exactly. And um, so just to give you like a, a mini lesson, when, when the ancients came up with the concept of astrology, they were looking at the visible stars that you could see in the night sky. And Saturn is the furthest visible star from planet Earth, so it moves the slowest. So for Saturn to make a lap around the zodiac takes like 28-ish years. And um, from the point of view of astrology, um, when it enters the sign that it was in when you were born, when you're at that age, that's kicking off a two and a half to three year period of tribulation and life lessons. So basically the idea is like before your Saturn return, you're an adolescent. After your Saturn return, you're an adult. And since both of you were born in the same year, and both of you were born with Saturn in Capricorn, you're in the thick of your Saturn return right now. Yes, we are. (laughs) And we're like becoming adults right now. It's good to know it's cosmic and it's not just personal. Yeah, and and it's interesting that you're using, you just chose the elements of like earthquakes and stuff, you know there's it's in the sign of capricorn which is an earth sign um and capricorn when you think of the image it's the the mountain goat climbing to the top of the mountain oh and you have a beautiful kitty and (laughs) we have a kitty with us too she she went in the other room but like the um 
Scarlet and I are a little bit older, and we just finished our Saturn returns um, when we, mm-hmm. when Saturn was in Sagittarius. But I got chewed up and spit out <laughs> by that, and that's what I wanted to like, because like you're doing all like you really are gaining popularity and influence like now, you know, and you're in the okay. middle of it, and it's cr- and I didn't really I knew the I knew the title of your EP was Pressure, but like I'm thinking now of like earthy like earthquake like like tectonic plates you know and that's like totally where everybody of your age i mean we're basically the same age but everybody that's in their saturn return now is dealing with that and you two are like producing music and art that's like in this you're like you're communicating that so it's really interesting very present Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Thank you for that info. I <laughs> yeah, now when things fall apart, you can be like, right. okay, well, it's my Saturn return, so. <laughs> so. We know when we're out of this. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're going to be out in like um, basically 2020. So it started in the very end of 2017 in December. Wow. So really? I, uh, wow. I lost my mom at the top of 2018. Mm-hmm. I'm I, lost really... my cat. I lost my cat last year in the middle of 2018 and somebody told me uh we were in new york we were in new york uh at the end of 2017 it was like towards the it wasn't the very end but it was at the end like november and this we had a show and this lady came up to me at the end and was like i really need to talk to you and she didn't even look like she was supposed to be there she looked like somebody auntie i'm like what are you okay so she came up she's like i really have to talk to you like i just man spirit told me to speak to you and all of this and you're about to really face some things like there are some things coming at you and she talked to me for like an hour and then after it was all said and done she gave me a, a big amethyst crystal like really big just to let me know it was real she was like look i don't even want to give this to you but i have to Mm. This is for you to take mm. care of yourself. Give yourself 300% mm. because you give a lot. You give a lot, you give a lot, and you need to give yourself more in this season because mm. stuff is about to go down. Mm. And it went down. So, man. man. Yeah. I, I, um, just to be even more transparent, like, I knew, I knew that we wanted to ask you two to be on the podcast, but we're new podcasts and we, we have never met or anything. But honestly, Cleva, I think you were doing an Instagram live where you were being like raw and open and transparent. I think you were talking about the death of your mother. And I was like, that's it. She's she we can talk to her about what we want to talk to her about by the way she's talking about these topics so that's what initially made me send that first message like hey we're a new podcast where we talk about woo woo stuff but um we would love to have you on so it's just like i it i felt that same thing you know it's like um what you're going through in your life now it's like hypothetically it's all supposed to serve a higher purpose you know so mm-hmm. That's really interesting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We all kind of go through our, our own things. My my dad passed away during my Saturn return, so I don't know how common it is to lose a parent during the Saturn return, but I kind of have a feeling it it, it does happen, and um, you just kind of gotta gotta get through it. But that's kind of what's what's neat about astrology, and and Dan's some more astrology one, and I do the tarot. But you can kind of use these two systems just as like a vehicle or a lens to to look at your own life and and try and get some some meaning out of even the the toughest times when you're going through them. So is the is the material on pressure like recent enough? Like was it written within the past two years? Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's recent. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I mean, that's you're making the Saturn return anthems or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and some of it, like two, I would say two of the records on there are pretty, a little more like heavy, mm-hmm. and then the other two are a little bit more like light and uh, and playful. And it's like, okay, look, let's just simplify it. Like we just drop simple. It's like let let's keep it simple, you know, because we can really complicate things with our thoughts and our emotions and so in in like we have the project that that has all the heavy material but then we also like remind you that things are simple and that things can be understood and things can be resolved 
and released so yeah the simple music video is awesome and the song is awesome it's been it's stuck on my head it's always stuck in my head whenever i see it because it's got such a like catchy hook but um we wanted to ask in the the video and the song um incorporates kids and it looks like it's filmed in sort of like a school you know mentoring or learning environment where the kids are using audio equipment and stuff could you explain for our listeners um like the the mentoring work you do and the community work you do because both of us were like all right these two are like not only like talented like <laughs> artists but they're actually like good people so <laughs> that's a part of the pressure too and, you know and nowadays people don't really care about that stuff they don't exactly. think it's cool and we're like what we need <laughs> that's the, this that's is what we do key. we need to live with <laughs> But um, no, we've always been like super connected to the youth. Um, That's how it started, low key. Yeah, yeah we, we were doing, uh, we always like, it's been my sister for forever type of thing. We did like little tracks here and there and shared stages. But we really started honing in on our work, uh, collaborating through uh, mentorship, through workshops and stuff like that. Um, and once that got started, then the Mother Nature tr uh, project came out and stuff mm -hmm. like all that just started to snowball. But uh, the work that we do, uh, we have a nonprofit under the same name, Mother Nature Incorporated. And we pretty much mesh hip hop, uh, mental health, entrepreneurship, things like that all together. So we just teaching kids for the most part how to love themselves, how to look outside the things that are uh, closing them in and just understand like whatever you need is already within you. The resources that you think you don't have, you do. And you can utilize what you what you have around you to get where you need to go. So that's pretty much what we try to preach and teach through our workshops. Um, and we we just got out of one got out of a residency with a with a school probably a few months ago. Uh, we, we try to fit them in as much as we can. Of course, the the music uh, schedule keeps us uh, busy enough. So, but we definitely try to incorporate the kids as much as we can in our music um, during the workshops and things like that. So, with the simple videos, actually, our homie uh, Monty Jordan of uh, UE Gang that introduced us to the kids and stuff. We came down, we played them the music. They was loving it. So we pressed play. Um, instantly got on the mic. They was already artists. They was already superstars. Yeah. So all we wanted to do was come and, and showcase that. So they just hopped on the track, added added their sauce to it. Uh, we, we got it mixed and stuff. Ended up using it, using their vocals and stuff in the actual video and on the song. And we actually just showcased, showcased it to them uh, last week when we dropped it too. So they was excited to see it. Mm -hmm. So it was a dope experience, definitely. Definitely like working with kids more than adults half the time, so. Honestly. <laughs> more kids, the better, so. Yeah, you can learn so much from kids. <laughs> yeah, I used to uh, teach kindergarten in elementary school um, mm. right out of college, so yeah. I miss it from time to time, it's really fun. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, uh, let's see, oh, another thing I wanted to ask you guys, and I don't know if you're like familiar with this at all, but um, when you think about kind of like spirituality, there's also this kind of wider, kind of like witchy uprising, I guess you could call it. Um, a lot of people using spirituality or even like as far as like witchcraft to to kind of like speak against a lot of the injustices in the world. Um, like there was that whole like Hex Trump movement and it's almost like people are kind of finding this power to speak up, you know, th using spirituality, using kind of female dominated spirituality, like something like witchcraft to kind of like regain that power um, when sometimes we feel that we don't have that power. And um, I was wondering if you'd ever like thought about that at all or, or um, if you've ever heard about that. I, I personally have not. I don't know if you have. Um, I, what I, I do in my room. You know, so. <laughs> you know, we've been reading some books. I'm putting, you know, a little couple hexes yeah. on people things yeah. like that. You know, we ain't tried nothing yet, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm all like, I don't know. I've had, I have a cousin of mine who, she she's a little younger than me, and she's totally into it. She's always been into it, like always. Mm -hmm. And I've like, I, it's been enough to where I can understand, but I've never like, personally tried to like practice anything or mix mm -hmm. herbs together and and do different things like that i just haven't i feel like there's a lot of energy that goes into it and 
Um, I never want to play with the spirit world no. either. So yeah, it's you gotta like, be careful. <laughs> you gotta be real careful. I, so I play it real safe. I play it real safe. But I mean, I think it's all connected. I think what one person might experience in witchcraft is the same person, same thing a person might experience in voodoo or Yoruba. You know, in like mm-hmm. these different religions. I think it's just that uh, it's real. It's very real. Mm-hmm. I know it's real. It's not something that you want to play with. Mm-hmm. I think it's. Um, I think you have to protect yourself first if that's something that you do want to do. So I don't know. I just honestly, I just been talking to my angels and my guides and praying mm-hmm. and you know uh, removing myself from situations that do not feel you know positively charged mm-hmm. and working on how to just raise my own frequency naturally. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, yeah, like she said, we might even read some stuff here and there. I'm like, oh, yeah, girl, yeah. But, I, yeah, I haven't, I'm not really into um, doing anything other than what I what I know I have the power to do, which is hip-hop. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, you don't really, I, it's interesting. Like, it's p- people, you j- it was just, it's just the label of a witch. It's like... Yeah. If are you you know like a there's like the idea of like the good witch and the bad witch and is a good witch just you know someone that doesn't cast spells or hexes but <laughs> someone that just does meditate and pray and focus on positive vibes and it's like the the craft part of it is like where you're actually using the tools and the ingredients but not everybody needs to do that to affect because the idea of magic and witchcraft is to affect change in the world and people think you know i need to gather the ingredients and you know do something in a certain way do it in a certain way at a certain time but if you're first of all if you're an artist you're creating magic just by making art so and you uh, when you said you know your words are spells like you're transmitting vibes through like poetry and through and the crazy thing is it's like so do you ever feel like like it, when it's flowing through you that you don't even remember what you just said but it just came out of you exactly. and that, that happens a lot like when we have like a um like high energy shows where like the crowd is like right there with us and and we just in between songs and stuff like it may not even be something that we rehearse but it's just something that like i feel the need to get this off my chest because i'm feeling it feeling some type of energy and vibes from the crowd and now i i need to now interpret that and regurgitate it back out to y'all like that's i, I don't know what else that is but magic but right, God, right, you right. know what i'm saying so mm-hmm. I, I definitely think like we we probably practice it without even knowing just right. because it's, it's just so innately connected to hip-hop i feel um it's Man, it's it's dope to to think of it in that type of form because a lot of people only look at hip hop as a music genre or stuff like that. But this is a culture. This is a thing that lives and breathes that that needs energies and vibrations to sustain. So for us to get on stage and and to be able to spit out these words and give give people these affirmations, things like that, I think that's that's the power that that hip hop has, and it, it it is magical in that sense because it can capture somebody just with a lyric, just with a hook, just mm-hmm. with you know anything like that so it's it's dope to connect those two i like i like how y'all uh y'all put that together it's dope yeah well a thing we read in the sick muse interview was the concept of healing and using hip-hop as healing could you elaborate on that for our listeners like what is that process like for you now uh i say we heal every day through hip-hop um you heal through creation Mm-hmm. I feel like you heal through when you when you create things, you create things that are of your image, of your likeness, um, that you can adore or that you can share. That does something to the heart. It opens it up. It opens. It just opens you up. It opens mm-hmm. your mind. It 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 releases dopamine. It mm-hmm. you know lowers your cortisol. I don't know. It just mm-hmm. does something um, when you're creating. So uh, for me, just experiencing trauma. You know, trauma with from my mother. Uh, you know, traumas from just being a black woman, um, from, you know, abortions and things like that. Like, the only thing that had the power to heal me really was my relationship with myself, which Mm -hmm. is Mm -hmm. hip hop. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what that is. So, um, being able to 
uh, have a, a space where I can be raw and not, and you know, hip hop allows you to not care what people think. Like, I don't care what you think about it. Like the way I said it and it's raw, you're going to repeat it and it's going to help you. Mm -hmm. So it's like just being able to be vulnerable in a, in a space with your writing or with the music or, you know, me and her being able to be, uh, in a room and make music together and start to break down those traumas, like break down the things that are, are really bothering us and afflicting us and the things that we don't understand that are causing us confusion. Like you start to write that stuff out and before you know it, you it's not you. It's, it's a spirit. It's something else in you that's, that's, or it's your higher self is that it's allowing you to like, oh, like you start to understand and you start to open yourself up. So that that's um, healing, you know, being able to like write something and then be able to spit it back out mm -hmm. or have people spit what you said back to you and help mm -hmm. you remember who you are. Mm -hmm. I think that that's, I think that that's where the healing power is. Um, in terms of like the 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 craft in itself yeah then there's a whole nother <laughs> aspect of like you know taking healing taking hip-hop into the classroom mm -hmm. and taking hip-hop into prisons mm -hmm. taking hip-hop into you know uh, just different spaces where people aren't able to authentically be themselves and people aren't uh, able to authentically express themselves hip-hop allows you to do that and not care who thinks about it like it's completely destroys um, you know, we'll take down the, the constructs that we've built up to protect us. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's what's so great about music is the act of creation. It's this extremely cathartic experience. You're able to like release all of this energy out into the world. And not only are you able to release that, it's able to affect, you know, potentially millions of individuals. So it is this kind of great power that you are able to harness in a way when you do create. Um, as so, women too, like being like hip hop being such a male dominated field, as mm -hmm. some would call it, I, I, I think it's pretty equal. Um, but with that being like it having this masculine energy to it, or that's how people perceive it, for us to be like women and to be like having the same type of like energetic music, but then like you're hearing something you never heard before, you're like, wait, mm -hmm. wait, wait. I'm talking about feelings. And right, I'm talking about love myself and, you know, and it not be something that people are like, it's cool, you know, it's cool, it's fun to say, it's fun to repeat back. Like, we got to start making uh, health and being healthy and healing something mm -hmm. that is okay. Like that's, It's a part of hip-hop. Yeah. It's been since, you know, since it, it, it was created, you know. Hip-hop was created partly by a woman, you know what I'm saying? So it, it has to have that type of aspect with it. It has to be able to to nurture you. It has to be able to give you a hug. It has to be able to 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 push you away sometimes. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's all of that in one. So when we when we talk about healing and we talk about hip hop, you don't have to be on stage in order to 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 get 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 those thoughts off. You can just be writing in your notebook and just to yourself. Like that's how I, I started. It was just me getting thoughts off, and then once once those thoughts were on paper, that that was my healing process. Like because I, I I'm one that I I let things linger in my head for as long as it takes to, but until I write it on paper or just get it out of my head, like that, that's, that's when it, it, it becomes like, oh, I can breathe yeah. now, it's over, it's done type of thing, and now you can move on, so. Even with like freestyling, you know, any, any artist that, somebody just kicked like a really hot freestyle, I guarantee if you go up to them afterwards and hug them, they're probably mm -hmm. vibrating, you know what I'm saying? And you're probably gonna feel that, that aura, whatever is coming off of them, because it's mm -hmm. like, you're taking something that's like, like your kundalini, right? You got this yeah. thing at the base of you and then you start to express and you start to just kind of naturally let that come up and come out and you can feel it it's evident so. yeah I think people need that now more than ever like people are so up in their heads or on their screens and it's like are you really a raw person or are you just like you know cultivating your your social media image like you guys I could just, <laughs> I was, I was drawn to your music by a, like, it, I was just sucked in. I was like, you know, once I'm sucked towards something, it's like, it's out of my control. And I'm like, so intrigued by your style and your story. And honestly, as like a local artist here, there are, you know, a handful of hip hop is not necessarily my top genre per se. Um, but the hip hop artists that I care about are the local ones that I see at local spots and everything. And there are certain people that I'm just rooting for from Chicago. <laughs> and that's the, you two are definitely on that list, you know. Uh, so we're getting um, towards the second half of the interview. We're in the second half. And we've got both of your birth charts. 
yeah. casted. <laughs> no, nope. right? You can imagine that one. So, um, the fir- like even before I technically made the birth charts, the first thing I noticed was the fact that um, Cleva, your sun sign is in Gemini. Truth, your sun sign is Sagittarius. Mm. Um, so there, and I, I knew like I when I was thinking about the chemistry between the two of you and the way that the two of you have that chemistry and the most basic sun sign level, Sagittarius is on the opposite end of the Zodiac of Gemini. So there is a polarity. You're born a half a year apart. So there's a natural polarity and chemistry between anybody that has signs that are, you know, opposite of each other that are in opposition. So even in like romantic relationships you often match people that are born six months apart with the sign like i'm i have a leo sun so an aquarius sun would match mine um so that off the bat showed some (laughs) some chemistry um the other thing obviously was something that you already mentioned was your saturn return is happening right now for both of you um both both of you have saturn and capricorn and like I said, that transit is is spanning from 2018 to 2020. Now, truth, you have a unique chart <laughs> that I wanted to... Hey, bring it down about it. me, brother. <laughs> so, truth, Saturn is in Capricorn for both of you, because you're both in your Saturn return. Um, and tr- truth, you, a lot of charts have planets scattered all over the, the Zodiac, basically, but you have a high concentration of powerful planets in one zone of your chart. They're all in Capricorn, actually. Really? So if you, <laughs> if you thought, you know, hey, I'm a Sagittarius sun, um, but maybe that didn't fully resonate with you. When you think of like who you are of the 12 signs, you have the most Capricorn, actually. And... Mm-hmm. All of the when you look at a chart, there's twelve houses. Um, for e- there's twelve signs and twelve houses. You have Capricorn in the first house, so you're a Capricorn rising also. Um, so Capricorn, like I said earlier, in in, in relation to your EP, um, Capricorn, the symbol is the mountain goat climbing to the top of the mountain. So it's kind of it can be a little bit cold. I'm not I'm not calling you cold, but it's like earth, you know, there's four elements in um, astrology earth, which is physical, it's your body, it's, you know, tangible concrete, air is mental, mental thoughts, everything that is in your, your intellect, you know, water, which is your emotions, like your feelings, and fire, which is like your passions, like your ambition and everything. And you have a really solid first house, which has, I'll just go, I'm, <laughs> I'm reading through the list of planets. You have Venus Venus in the first house, Uranus in the first house, Mercury, Neptune, and Saturn. Oh, wow. So I would guess that, you know, Capricorn is kind of like the CEO of the Zodiac and is no all about success. And long-term planning and long-term goals and patience because you think of the the trek to the top of the mountain to your goal. It's not instant gratification. It's a long, drawn-out process. And I mentioned the planet Saturn and like all the planets are kind of like characters, basically. You they're comparable in like Greek mythology. They're comparable in like the gods of you know the old religions and everything saturn is father time he's kind of the old man with the beard where he slows you down and forces you to make tangible karmic lessons in life Mm. and both of you have saturn and capricorn so both of you are in your saturn return right now um but as far as like the themes of capricorn you have venus which can be both your romantic world and also your creative world because venus is like the muse you have venus in capricorn mercury in capricorn so your mind and the way you communicate is colored by the capricorn theme and then saturn so like your 
your responsibility and the, the ability for you to make tangible results in life is colored by Capricorn. So I think as you go through the Saturn return period, you have a lot. It's it's probably going to affect you more than most because you have <laughs> such a pile up of these planets. Um, That's what that is. <laughs> yeah, and and I guess like, but it's also like resources too. You know, like so it, it's going to be affecting your your art, your mind, and all of these other factors. Um, and people that have a big pile up of planets in one area of their chart. It can be viewed as a good thing or a bad thing, but say when when the the current stars are affecting you, you might go through a long period where nothing's really affecting you, and then once something hits the Capricorn stuff, it all comes at you at once. So I don't know if any of that is resonating with you or not, but yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> that's kind of like the first thing that came came to my eye when I looked at your chart, but um. Yeah. So um, that's probably what I would sum sum up for you. And also you have a Scorpio moon. So I saw the video where you guys are kind of in the leather. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> that's what Scorpio looks like. You know, Scorpio is kind of like dark and it's got the sting. So so a Scorp- I have a Scorpio moon too. It It, it can be like really powerful but if you use it in the wrong way you can really sting you know kind of like the scorpion has that stinger and you could also sting yourself you know like but the symbolism of scorpio is death and rebirth um so you kind of go through that transformation with and the moon rules your emotions and everything so your emotions are powerful but they can be self-sabotaging if you don't keep them in check. You know what I mean? Yeah, very true. Um, so then, yeah. Cleva, I've got your chart too. Um, oh. <laughs> Cleva, you got you. You were you're a Gemini sun, and I think you kind of have Gemini vibes anyway. Like on the when I just like see you perform, <laughs> I, I Gemini is ruled by the planet Mercury. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. It's 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 got like a, a trickster element, and even the name Cleva, I think it's like Mercury is like a clever little trickster, you know, like so like he zips around and um, and he's the god of communication too, yes, so it makes yeah. sense for for like hip hop or rap or any type of kind of a loquacious pursuit, you know, that Mercury would be on your side for that. I don't know. <laughs> We like that word. <laughs> but yeah, and and you're also a, but you're also a Leo rising. So in the way that truth was Capricorn, which is kind of more stern and focused and concrete and solid. Leo rising is like um the likes to be on stage and likes to be dramatic and likes to be seen and has a natural charisma. Um but you said you were kind of familiar with your birth chart already. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, like the 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 I guess the three main things to sum up anybody's birth chart that you focus on are your sun, your moon, and your rising sign. Um, and you have your sun and moon in Gemini. So you were born a little bit after a new moon in Gemini. Um, so that just gives you like your emotional state and your higher self state are colored by the symbols of Gemini and Gemini likes to, you know, jump between lots of different subjects and jump between a lot of different people and quick and move and be flighty between lots of different things. And it can (laughs) can make you like a social butterfly. It can make you a jack of all trades. You know, it's like one of those types of situations. Um, And, but also in the way that truth in the way that truth had um, a high concentration of planets in one area, your chart, you're actually kind of balanced between the elements. Like you have sun in Gemini, moon in Gemini, those are air. Mercury in Taurus, that's earth. Venus in Aries, which is fire. Mars in Pisces and Jupiter in Cancer, and those two are water. So um, it's kind of like, 
when I think of the dynamic between you two as a group, I could, and I don't know if this is true at all, but I could see truth sort of not sort of setting the practical goals perhaps with the group and sort of leading the charge towards the end goal and leading the way on the journey and understanding that the journey is long and you have to be patient and you have to be strong and solid and truth it i would guess that you have like a strong sense of self like i don't know if if you are okay um just being alone with yourself or if you're okay being <laughs> solid like you, you like solidly like at peace with yourself because the first house is the the body the self the personality the identity and clever you have this like jack of all trades multifaceted balance of the elements so when you two work together as artists it's like i feel like truth you could be not like kind of driving it trying to leading the way and using each other's gifts together you know what i mean i hope that makes sense yeah no we totally both need each other <laughs> she's my rock and i'm her i'm her butterfly yeah that's the most perfect symbolism <laughs> the, rock the, the rock is like the the, the mountain rock, the you butterfly know? Just, just yeah. rock, you know? yeah. so do you guys have any like specific questions about that i kind of just did that on the spot and poured it out but <laughs> Hey, it sounds about hey, right. Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty accurate. Uh, yeah, so when do we get rich? <laughs> right, so let's say, well, where's the tarot cards? Well, okay, I could, I could look at your... Um, I could do that for the reading. Yeah, do you want a tarot reading just about... Success or... Yes, prosperity. 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 You know, health, you know, that's good too. Well. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, so I'll do... Um, I'm just gonna shuffle the cards a bit and I can pull three cards that can give you guys some guidance on where you should be headed in order to to maximize that prosperity. Sure. Have you guys ever had a reading before? Uh, yeah. Like together? Or, or just kind of in, in general, either I, way. I may have, I may have may not what it came up to be, but you know, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Awesome. So I'm just going to cut the deck a couple times. And for our listeners, when is the EP going to be released? What's the actual date? First week of March. Awesome. Okay. Coming up. Yeah. It's very mm -hmm. quick. Okay, so I think I'll draw three cards, and we'll go over them one at a time. Are you ready for the first card? Is this for, is for both of us? Yeah, like, I think I'm going to do it for, like, your group in general and the prosperity oh. for your group. Awesome, Get it. awesome. So let's see what we get. First card, Ooh. Eight of Cups. So cups is associated with the element water. So just like with astrology, how you have the four elements incorporated, tarot is the same kind of a thing. Um, there's four suits, just like how playing cards have four suits. Um, and then you also have extra cards, which are called the major arcana. But for this card, our first card here, Eight of Cups, it shows a figure walking away. And there's a moon in the distance. It's kind of a, a dark sky. There's a mountain, a couple mountains in the distance, which is kind of fun because we were just talking about Capricorn. And then there's the eight cups in the foreground. And this card, it's interesting when you think about it in terms of prosperity because it suggests there's the need to walk away from something. Not that you need to be walking away from like what you're doing, but in order to get that prosperity, that success. Oh, and because cups are often about relationships, I'm guessing that there are some, the people that you need to be surrounding yourself with in order to achieve that prosperity might be different than the people you're with now. Um, so there's the need to kind of walk away from anyone that isn't helping you get to those goals. Leave the toxic people behind. Leave the toxic people behind. And it shows like a figure kind of walking alone on their journey. So I think there's part of this um, journey to success is going to be you guys kind of figuring out, you know, how do I leave some people behind that aren't really assisting us right now? And how do I go out, even though that's scary, 
and find the people that are going to help. Wow. Wow. It's a powerful first card you just drew right there. (laughs) (laughs) And this is a tough card, too, because, like, breaking up any type of connection with people is is dramatic and so there's going to be a bit of a, a, a not too much heartbreak but it's going to be a tough tough journey this is all my all my stuff is insane for the <laughs> like past three months i'm like but this is your saturn <laughs> ret- the saturn return like when 2020 rolls around you yeah. you two are going to be even more glowing that you made it yeah. through this gauntlet you know what i mean yeah <laughs> 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 so let's see what we get for our second card. Second card. Ooh. Knight of Cups. A new person enters the picture. Ooh. So y'all is pulling some stuff. <laughs> we were just talking about kind of leaving some people behind. The Knight of Cups. He's like a knight in shining armor, right? So he's one of the knights. He's holding out a cup. So again, it's relationships with people. Mm-hmm. And the Knight of Cups is someone who is a romantic, someone who wears their heart on their sleeve. And I think that this person is going to help you on this journey towards prosperity, but they're going to probably get a little too attached to So you're going to need to be cautious because the Knight of Cups is someone who, while I think is going to help you towards your goal, and I think probably in the music industry, it is a lot about who you know. Um, So this person um, is going to be great to work with, but at the same time, emotionally, they're going to be a little intense. So you're going to need to stick, um, keep straight with your own goals, um, keep a good head on your shoulders because they might be all over the place emotionally. And you're going to have to be that steady rock, keeping that direction moving forward. Um, And the, the knight is on a horse. So there's the idea that it is moving forward, but slowly. Um, so I think that new person is going to present themselves. And this knight in shining armor, um, it's got two symbols. Um, on the one is wings. So it's got kind of the wings of Hermes mm-hmm. or Mercury, which is kind of fun because we were talking about Mercury earlier. And another symbol is fish. So um, keep an eye out just as you're kind of interacting with new people. If you see any like symbols that are like the wings or a fish, maybe take note. Um and then let's see what we get for our last card. Card number three. Oh my gosh. Oh, great card, great you card. You two are going to be rich. You guys are going to be rich. <laughs> <laughs> so we got the 10 of pentacles and pentacles is the earth sign. So just again, like astrology, earth can be connected with the physical body, but it's also in tarot, the, um, the suit that's associated with success with finance the symbol are these golden coins and you got the 10 which is the highest card (laughs) of the highest number of gold (laughs) coins on one card (laughs) and this card it's so much more than just kind of financial prosperity and success this card is really about legacy this is showing kind of a, um, a whole lifetime like in this image it shows Um, There's like a dog, there's a kid, there's a couple, there's an elderly person. So it's showing like a whole legacy of your life and thinking about after achieving um, that success, really leaving something that's long lasting into the world, putting that out into the space. So I think, you know, with this third card here, you're going to achieve it. But the first two steps that are going to have to happen is you're going to have to like Cut mm-hmm. those people out that aren't helping you. And you're going to need to seek out this Knight of Cups because he's going to help you on that journey to get you to that Ten of Pentacles. It, do, it doesn't necessarily have to be a man. It the doesn't knight, have to be a knight. The yeah. Knight of Cups could be anybody, really. Yeah. Even though there's like knights and queens and stuff in tarot, it's not so much about the gender. It's more just about kind of um, their the personality function, type yeah. and their function. But, um, yeah, a really great card to to end it on. The Ten of Pentacles. Is- I'm really, okay, full disclosure, <laughs> I was really scared we were going to give you a horrible reading. <laughs> and I was going to be yeah, like, hey, we don't, have to, we don't have to air this if we drew, like, the devil or, like, the, like... <laughs> the tower. <laughs> the tower, yeah. So I'm really relieved. Literally, that last card is, when you're asking about prosperity, that's mm-hmm. one of the best ones that's you could ask for. Right yeah. Yeah. Thanks, y'all. Man, appreciate it. We are yeah, good. We needed this type of uh, affirmation, uh, confirmation, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, that uh, now I feel like 
We're ending on a good note. We're ending on a good note, and I feel like light and like transformed just from talking. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I feel lighter. I feel good too. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. So, where can people find you online? Mother Nature Bars with a Z dot com or on IG Mother Nature Bars with a Z. Bam! Come check us out. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, and def- check out their new. I mean check out their music videos because the visuals are like so interesting and appealing and fun and we are rooting for mother nature because chicago is producing some good shit these days and <laughs> check I'm, out the same man it's, yeah. it's abundant it's beautiful it's yeah. great <laughs> and we're so glad that we could talk about these subjects because i don't know how often you get interviewed talking about astrology and tarot. Okay, so, like, this is probably one of the best yeah. interviews we've had. I'm like, yeah. Sure. yeah. Well, thank you two so much for being a part of Cosmic Keys. And thank to our you. listeners, check Mother Nature out. And best of luck with all of your the your Capricorn endeavors and <laughs> your Gemini um, multifaceted right. spirit. spirit. Yeah, the butterfly, the rock and the and butterfly is a very important symbolism. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Take care. Yours, use your force, open.